So Advent of Code Day 1, you're given a series of uh, integer inputs, and you're just trying to find the number that increased over the previous value. So 207 is greater than 200, but 200 is not greater than 210. And you're just trying to get the count of that. So I saw this and thought this was a pretty easy solution in SQL and wanted to give it a shot. Okay, so I have a Postgres database up and running and I set up my inputs so that they are an in input.txt. I got the smaller sample uh, and sample.txt so I could develop against that quicker first. Um, and this is my solution. Uh, so I put everything in the uh, answer into a schema. This makes it so that I could just rerun this file over and over and it just drops everything in the day one schema. Uh, and then I recreate it. Schemas are a great way to just encapsulate um, stuff within a single database. Uh, I then create a table to store our input data. Uh, it has a serial ID just so that we have a way to order them um, by uh, ingress. And then we have a value, we know it's an integer, we, it, we expect it not to be null. And then just for fun, I put in a constraint here, a check that the value is always greater than zero. We expect this to be true. Um, I don't think it matters. You know, if there's negatives, this algorithm would still work, but you know, just for fun, I threw that in there. And then I use a copy. So a slash copy runs in the client side, like psql versus if I remove the slash, it runs on the server side um, because I want the file paths to be relative to my, uh, uh, my console, I use slash copy. So I'm copying data into the inputs table in the day zero one schema uh, into the value column from input.txt with a text format. So if we quickly look, I'll open actually the sample.txt. If we open the sample.txt, it's just one line per. So this copy will expect each row to be one uh, line. And then they're, usually you would separate columns by like a comma or something, it's configurable, but because it's one column, it's really easy. So I could just copy it directly without you know modifying the data. This is just downloaded directly from the problem set. So we copy it in there uh, and then we sort of work with the table. So I'll show each of the, break down each of these, uh, but let's sort of jump in and at least get the inputs in. Okay, so I'm at a point where I brought in the sample input and what we want to figure out is which one of these is greater than the last one. So what I really want is a table where I have the value and the previous value. Uh, and we could use window functions for that. Okay, so this is a query just showing how we could get the value and, and the previous value. So we are selecting the value, of course, and then using this window function. So this whole thing is a window function that lets us look over sort of adjacent rows in a result set. So lag returns previous rows. So I want to see the, the most previous value over the order by ID. So it, given an ordering by ID, I want to see the most previous value. And then I call that prev from our inputs and then order them all by ID, which will be our insertion order. So if I do that, I could see value 199, previous is null because there is none, and I get the previous in each one. So now that I have this table, what I really want to know is the count of how many of these where value is greater than previous. And we could uh, include the null if we want, or uh, something I would do instead is just offset this whole query by one, uh, uh, omit the first value so we never have a null in there. Um, and next, I want to use this sort of as a temporary table, not literally, but um, sort of abstractly like a temporary table to select that count. Um, so the way I like to do that uh, is using common table expressions. I think they're a really easy way to sort of write the query. It doesn't look great when it's in a console here, but um, it works the best. So I'm going to write that now. Okay. And this is the common table expression I would use. So we can name their temporary table lag data as, and then that query we just wrote. So that's, you know, it's pop creates that table. And then given that lag data table, I want to select the count where the value is greater than previous and we get the answer. Um, and that is it. So if I bring it all together in a script here, we now have a better formatted version of that query. You could see the common table expression here where we populate lag data with that query that we did, um, select the count and that's what it outputs. And if I run the full SQL against the real input, we get our answer, which is 1,387, which I already validated as correct.